In this lesson, we're going to learn how to identify functions from mapping diagrams, ordered pairs, and input and output tables. Let's begin by making sure we understand what a function is and how a function works. A function is a relation or a rule that assigns inputs to outputs. In a function, each input produces exactly one output. In other words, a function is completely predictable. I like to think of a soda machine. Suppose we have a soda machine that has three buttons, A, B, and C. The button that you press is the input, and the soda that comes out is the output. In this machine, button A creates the output root beer, button B creates the output ginger ale, and button C creates the output orange soda. When you push any one of those buttons, you know exactly what flavor of soda will come out of the machine. The each input produces one output. This is a function because of that, each input producing exactly one output. Suppose we change the machine a little bit. Suppose ginger ale is not a popular flavor, but everybody likes root beer, so we decide to set two buttons for root beer. Now, when you press button A, you get a root beer. If you press button B, you get a root beer. If you press button C, you get an orange soda. Is this relation a function? Yes, it is. For any button that you press, you know exactly what the output will be. This is a function because each input produces exactly one output. But suppose something funky happens. Suppose we have button A is a root beer and button B is a ginger ale. But something strange happens with button C. When you press button C the first time, you got a root beer. You pressed it again, you got a cola. Pressed it again, a ginger ale. The next time, an orange soda. You tried it again and you got a grape soda. Press it one more time, you got a ginger ale. Each time you pressed button C, you got a different output. This is not a function because the input C produces more than one output. Remember, with a function, each input produces exactly one output, and it's that same output every single time. In mathematics, our functions typically don't produce flavors of soda, instead they produce numbers. Here's an example of a function which is in the form of a mapping diagram. A mapping diagram contains a list of inputs and outputs with arrows that show how they're connected. Let's take a look at three different mapping diagrams and we'll determine whether or not each represents a function. Here's example A. Example A, we have the inputs 1, 2, 3, and 4. We have the outputs 5, 6, 7, and 8. Input 1 produces the output of 5, as shown by the arrow. Input 2 produces the output of 7. Input 3 produces the output of 6. Input 4 produces the output of 8. Is this relation a function? We have to ask ourselves whether each input produces only one output. Is that the case? In this case it is. When I input a 1, I get a 5 every time. Input a 2, I get a 7 every time. Input a 3, I get a 6 every time. Input a 4, I get an 8 every time. This relation is a function because each input produces exactly one output. Let's look at a second example. This time with the inputs 1, 2, 3, 4 and the outputs 5, 6, and 7. In this relation, input 1 produces the output 5. Input 2 produces the output of 6. Input 3 produces the output of 7. And input 4 also produces the output of 7. Is this relation a function? Yes, it is. That's because each input produces exactly one output. You might be concerned that the 3 and 4 both produce a 7. But that's okay. It's like when we had two separate buttons on the soda machine that gave you a root beer. So what would it look like if a mapping diagram showed a relation that was not a function? Well, let's take a look. In exercise C, the input 1 produces the output of 5. The input 2 produces the output of 6. The input 3 produces two different outputs, 7 and 8. And the input 4 produces the output of 8. The problem is here with the input 3. The input 3 produces two different outputs, 7 and 8. In a function, your inputs can only produce one output. Therefore, this is not a function 
because the input 3 produces more than one output. Let's extend this idea to see how we can apply it to lists of ordered pairs. Remember an ordered pair has the form x, y where x is the input and y is the output. Here's a list of ordered pairs. Does this list of ordered pairs represent a function? Think about what this means. If we were to create a mapping diagram, we have the inputs 2, 3, and 4. 2 outputs a 5, 3 outputs a 6, and 4 outputs a 6. Is this relation a function? Does each input produce exactly one output? In this case, yes it does. This is a function because each input produces exactly one output. Let's look at a second set of ordered pairs. Here we have the points 3, 5, 3, 5, and 4, 6. Think about what this would look like as a mapping diagram. We have the input 3 producing the output 5, the input 3 producing the output 5 again, and the input 4 producing the output 6. Does each input produce only one output? Yes, they do. Therefore, this relation is a function because each input produces exactly one output. Let's look at one final set of ordered pairs. Here we have three pairs, 3, 2, 3, 4, and 4, 6. Let's think about what this means as a mapping diagram. The input 3 produces the output 2, the input 3 produces the output 4, and the input 4 produces the output 6. Is this relation a function? Remember, each input produces exactly one output in a function. However, here the input 3 produces two different outputs, 2 and 4. Therefore, this relation is not a function because the input 3 produces more than one output. Here are a couple of problems for you to try. Can you determine whether or not each set of ordered pairs represents a function? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready to compare answers. Let's compare answers. In exercise D, we have the inputs 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We have the outputs 5, 6, and 7. It's only necessary to list each input once and each output once because we'll be drawing arrows. The point 2, 5 means we have the input of 2 and the output of 5. The point 3, 6 means we have the input 3 and the output 6. The point 4, 7 means we have the input 4 with the output 7. 5, 6 means we have the input 5 with the output 6. And 6, 7 means we have an input of 6 and an output of 7. Is this relation a function? We ask ourselves, does each input produce exactly one output? Yes, it does, and so this relation is a function. How about exercise E? Exercise E, we have the inputs 2, 3, 4, and 5. We have the outputs 5, 6, and 7. Again, no need to write duplicate inputs or outputs in the list because we're going to draw arrows to connect them. The point 2, 5 means we have the input 2 and the output 5. The point 3, 6 means we have the input 3 and the output of 6. The point 4, 7 means we have the input 4 and the output of 7. The point 2, 7 means we have the input of 2 with an output of 7. And 5, 6 means we have an input of 5 with an output of 6. Does this relation represent a function? We have to ask ourselves if each input produces exactly one output. Notice the input 2 has two different outputs. 5 and 7. Therefore, this relation is not a function because that input 2 produces more than one output. Let's extend this idea to an input and output table. Here we have two input and output tables. Do you think you can determine which one is a function and which one is not? Please pause the video here and see if you can apply what you already know to determine which of these relations is a function and which one is not. Let's see how you did. In the table, we have inputs and outputs. The x's are the inputs, and the y's are the outputs. 
2, 3 means we have the input 2 with the output 3. 3, 6 means we have the input 3 with the output of 6. 4, 5 means we have the input 4 with the output of 5. And 5, 7 means we have the input of 5 with the output of 7. Is this relation a function? We ask ourselves if each input produces exactly one output. It does, and therefore this relation is a function. How about table B? Once again, we'll make our input and output list for our mapping diagram. We have the inputs 4, 5, and 6, and the outputs 2, 9, 15, and 30. The point 4, 2 represents an input of 4 with an output of 2. 5, 9 means the input is 5 and the output is 9. 5, 15, input 5, output 15. And 6, 30, input 6, output 30. Does this table represent a function? Again, we ask ourselves if each input produces exactly one output. We see that the input 5 produces two different outputs. That's a violation of the rule for being a function. Therefore, this is not a function because the input 5 produces more than one output. So now you know everything you need to know in order to be able to identify a function from a mapping diagram, from a list of ordered pairs, or from input and output tables. You can learn more about functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.